All right, welcome YouTubers. This is the uh, new display I put up this year. It's a pair of uh, four by four by four plywood sheets with uh, 21 by 21 grid for the pixel lights. You're looking at the front side. I got two of them side by side uh, for the display this year. I gave up on the well. I just got rid of the mega trees, and now I decided to do some grids. This is some kind of cool stuff. If I look at the back side here, a whole lot of wiring. Of course, the mega tree mega Mega grids start in the lower left and go up and down, up and down, up and down. And so, yeah, a lot of holes in the board. I just got some poles with some banged in the ground to hold them in, but they're pretty sturdy. They're not really going anywhere. Um, so, yeah, 21 by 21. I think that's, let's do my math here. I think it's 441 individual pixel lights per board, and I got two of them. Uh, my controller's in there, the E682 controller, the normal outdoor case, and I got a couple battery cases, which are just inside the battery cases. I've got uh, just power supplies. I think they're 40 amp power supplies to power these. These are 5 volt variety, so a lot of power injection, a lot of wiring. I did them all down at the bottom here, and just every third or fourth strand, I put a new uh, uh, power insertion, and... Uh, uh, timing to it so yeah it's an oddball number which is a little bit different maybe I'll get into a little explanation about that versus you know last year I had the tree with you know 50 uh, 25 up 25 down so these things come in units of 50 nice even numbers whereas 21 up 21 down you end up doing a lot of splicing in the middle uh, when you get to a run and all you gotta do is splice one to the next but then you gotta balance your feeds for your losses so yeah I'll show you some video you probably seen a little video on this and some of the stuff you can do and then I'll get into some of the stuff that uh, uh, all these are like half inch holes and you just got to stick them through and balance them you know a little bit so it takes a little time it takes a lot of time to drill all those holes um, and paint it just painted you know black but it's good for this year all wired up good to go got my controller running back to the house there's a laptop in the house a little netbook that's what I run Vixen off of so yeah that's it for this year All right, I apologize for some of that noise on those uh, speeded up videos. Um, that was set up night, and we had, I think, about 30, 40 mile an hour winds. So it was a pretty windy night that night, so it was a lot of microphone noise. But anyways, it gave you an idea. So with the grids, um, it's awful nice. I mean, it's, like I said, there are 441 pixels to a board, and trying to put a Christmas tree or a you know, picture um, can be quite labor intensive if you try to do it manually pixel by pixel so what I came up with was a little tool here to help and so I'll share this off and this is basically an Excel spreadsheet and this this hap this grid right here happens to be 21 by 21 and I paint it with a black area I made each column with 20 pixels and each height 20 pixels just to make it nice proportional and so I've got a little macro when I push this button it'll save it off and you can see some of these Christmas trees I did manually, um, which is a lot easier than programming it in, in Vixen, but um, in general, uh, it took some time. Uh, not too bad. And these musical notes, you probably saw a couple of these in the videos. I just kind of, those were pretty quick. I just took a little outline, put them in there, colored them. If I want to change them another color, and I could copy these back up and make different. These are all saved off. This is also what this macro does. Now, once I get to this guy here, uh, I st started copying from from uh, from Chrome and stuff like that, and I'll show you a little bit about um, how that's happening. Um, again, you probably saw some of these in the video, and you know they look a little crisp here. And then, but you're gonna have to blow these down to 21 by 21, which is very small. Most of these clip art comes much larger uh, off the internet. Let me just see if I had anything. American flag, you probably, and then I have a hippo song. So let me go back up top and just show you how that's done. Um, and I'll get into the.
All right, so let me pick a Santa like this one here and right click on it. Copy image, go back to Excel, paste it. You get something like that. Uh, on the old Excel, you had a picture bar. On the new one, there's a ribbon uh, where you can find the transparency. And I'm going to set it to this white one and see what happens. Eh, that doesn't look too bad. So let me uh, let me save this off with the macro, and it should save me a copy down here. Um, I messed up that a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, it overwrote my last one. Um, but what it also did, the macro, is it put it in this file folder over here. So now I've got uh, 420 by 420 Santa, and I had a Mario one before that. And there's one more process I have to do with this older version of Excel, um, and that's I'll edit it, right-click, edit it, and then you see this white bar sort of around the edge here. That'll actually interpret when I squeeze it down to 21 by 21 as a white bar. I found that in practice. So all I do here is kind of select and delete and select and delete, and then go ahead, my color is black, and hit the paint can, black it out, I'm usually going to resize it at this point. You can see if I go to pixels, it's 420 by 420. I'm going to make it 42 by 42, uh, which is double 21 by 21, but then I have some scalability. Um, Vixen will scale it down for you, but this also gives me some, some ability to scale it up a little bit. Uh, when I do some of those flying images, you're able to do that and get a little bit of better picture quality. So let me do 42 by 42. You can do any size you want, um, and it's real small. And I'm just going to save it off. Let me go ahead and do the, the Mario one while I'm there, too. Same process. Select. And remove the edges. Give me a paint. Repaint it back in. Resize it from 420 by 420 to 42 by 42. And save it off. So now I got um, two of these guys. Um, I've got a whole collection of them. I'm going to copy it over my collection. Uh, let me do that offline, and we'll, let me go back to Excel in here. So let's take a look at the macro. Of course, after I'm done with this guy, I just delete him, and I can fill in. So for some reason, there's a couple of these hanging out there. I can fill in blacks here if I need to. Oops. Uh, but let's look at the macro. The macro is pretty simple. Uh, it's attached to this copy X. It just selects the range, um, increments that number in Z, so I get a unique number, so I can do one after another after another pretty quickly. Uh, copy, paste, copy, paste. This selection to picture calls this function down here. I call it Xmas with whatever that appended whatever that cell is. That's why you saw those two were Xmas 161 and 163, and it copies it. Uh, I'm sorry, it does that function. So that function creates a little shell, makes it into a that name under that my, my uh, under Xmas directory under my desktop with the PNG on the end of it, um, collects it, copies it as a picture, looks at the height, and then it inserts a temporary object, a chart, and gives it a size that makes sense here. Um, paste it in there, and then exports it to the file, to the PNG. That's how it gets out to my hard drive. Then it deletes it, um, that, that chart. So it's always creating and deleting charts in this uh, Excel file. Of course, it comes back here, and this is just for me. I copy that selection, and I dump it in that column in the next available spot. So i got a copy of it. If I ever want to copy that back and change the color or whatever, I can do that. It's just nice then, as opposed to redoing it. Because some of these, when you take them off um, the Internet, you got sometimes you got to go to paint, and you want to change the blacks to browns. I've done that with a Santa belt. Um, and sometimes you got to... You know, get out there and scrub it around, especially if it's 3D-ish. Uh, in other words, the white transparency just doesn't help you. Um, and so that's all this does, and I'll probably take and post this down in the comments if anybody's really interested. Um, but that's a quick way to, in general, shrink that stuff down to 42 by 42 from the uh, thing with a nice black background. And, of course, I need the black background. Otherwise, the white LEDs overpower you know, blend out, wash out the picture. So it's a nice crisper if I got a black background um, for this effort. Not a lot of the clip art comes with black back, back, black backgrounds. All right, so I've copied my Mario and other Santa guy on the end of my um, keep file. Um, 
and you can see all the pictures I've got out here just clip a lot of these are clip art like I said and here was the last hippos and stuff like that but um, yeah they'll be available for now so let me go to Vixen and put the Vixen preview and Vixen so let me just start a new sequence time sequence and I got grid A and grid B which is my left and right I'm not gonna have any music on this one and let me just insert a quick add effect nutcracker and change this nutcracker to a grid whoops yep grid and a picture and then I just select the file and it comes from my keep file here so let me scroll all the way down to bottom that's why I had different numbers on these here's the Santa I just did right so now I've got it coming from the left let me just do none to see how it looks and you can see I've got it I can scale it a little bit from the 42 you know you can do this to scale it to grid but I usually like to make it a little bit bigger just to get a little bit better clarity out of it and I'm doing no speed so like that so that'll go on for a few seconds let me copy that it's just easier to copy let me insert on the right grid and do the same thing let me pick the Mario this time Mario and he's pretty cool let me go ahead and uh, I'll bring him in from the right does he look like he's going out from the left all right good job Mario and my scaling looks pretty good not bad so that's what he looks like let's go ahead and run it and you can pay attention to the preview up here f5 to run and you get the little that guy and then Mario comes in from the other side so yeah that's programming in a nutshell a lot easier than getting those pixels uh, one by one although it would be a lot cleaner one by one these times sometimes get a little grainy or whatever they are but hey <laughs> saving a lot of time so I thought I'd go through that exercise for you um, thanks for watching definitely you know the other two videos that I have on my channel going back a couple years ago tell you how to set up the um, the e686 work with this vixen it's a very complicated process and it helped a lot of people out I believe fairly popular video uh, in the series so this is just this year migrating the grids uh, kind of nice um, who knows what the future holds all right thank you